This is going to be such a great lesson. I'm really excited for you. Now let me give you some context. We're going to watch a very brief clip of a millennial attending a job interview with a baby boomer. If you don't know what a millennial and a baby boomer are, just they're people from different generations. So they're very different ages, okay? And just imagine, just imagine what it would be like to have an interview with someone who just graduated from university and someone who's about ready to retire. Very different worlds they're coming from, right? So this is a clip that I use with my students in the Finally Fluent Academy to teach them lots of natural expressions, phrasal verbs, and help them feel really confident sounding like a native English speaker. So here's what we'll do. I'm going to play a very brief portion of this clip, okay? And in this clip, Amy, the young lady, Amy is explaining why she cannot start work at 8 o'clock in the morning, okay? So, listening exercise, here is part of the clip, and I want you to fill in the blank. I'll play it three times. Warning, Amy, like most millennials and many native English speakers, Amy speaks very fast, okay? So this is going to come at you very quickly. So get ready, I'll play it three times and put your answer in the comments. Okay, here we go. I Skype with my French boyfriend in Paris until like three in the morning. I Skype with my French boyfriend in Paris until like three in the morning. I Skype with my French boyfriend in Paris until like three in the morning. So, did you get it? That was fast, wasn't it? Really fast, but I'll be honest with you. That is how many native English speakers talk. And that's why it's so important to study native English speakers and get comfortable with this natural pace, okay? Because that's what it's going to be like when you're having conversations in the real world. So, here's what Amy said. Did you get some of this at least? Maybe you got our key word, which was Skype. Skype is a method of communication. I don't know about you, but I use Skype all the time. I Skype with my friends, I Skype with my students, I Skype with my family. It's one of the methods of communication I use a lot. Now you may not have noticed, but I just used Skype as both a noun and a verb. Hmm, maybe even go back that last 20 seconds and listen to that again. So that's what we're going to talk about now. We're going to talk about the most common methods of communication and how you can use them in both noun form and verb form. So let's jump onto my computer and I'll use the explanation that I prepared for my students in the Finally Fluent Academy. Here we go. I Skype with my French boyfriend in Paris until like 3 in the morning. I Skype with my French boyfriend in Paris until like 3 in the morning. So here, notice she's specifying in the morning. Now, would this be AM or PM? AM, right? So she could have said until like 3 AM. Now here, it makes sense that she provides the in the morning or the AM because it wouldn't be obvious based on the context, right? So it makes sense that she specified this. And here we have a word filler, we can just get rid of that. Now, I want you to notice this. I Skype with my French boyfriend. What is this here? Is this a noun, a verb? What do you think? So this is a verb. We're using Skype as a verb, okay? Now what verb tense is she using? All verbs are in a verb tense. So what verb tense is she using here? Do you see it? Present simple. And why? Why is this in the present simple? Because she's letting the baby boomer know that she Skypes with her boyfriend as a routine action. Now this is something we do in English a lot, and that's very natural, is to use our methods of communication as verbs, okay, instead of nouns. So let's take a look at some of the common forms of communication and how you can use them naturally in sentences. 
So here, notice, these are all verbs, all of these, because we have subject, verb. I texted, I messaged, I IM'd. This stands for instant messenger, I IM'd. I Skyped, emailed, FaceTimed last night. So all of these are in the past, right? I texted, texted, messaged, IM'd, Skyped, emailed, FaceTime. So you'll have to take some time for the pronunciation of these because they all end in ED. Now, if you want to use the noun, you could say, I sent him a text or I sent him a message. Now here, because it's a noun, we have an article. But when we get to I am or email, it's a vowel, right? So we need an as, an as our article. I sent him a text. I sent him an email, an email. Honestly, this one is way more common for native English speakers. But you can definitely see this one too. It doesn't sound awkward or anything like that. But just, it's very common to use it as the verb. Now, depending on the mode of communication, you could also use chatted. And here, notice you chat with someone. I chatted with him on Messenger, on Messenger, on Facebook, on Skype. So when you chat with someone, it implies more of a direct, two-way communication back and forth, you know, at the same time. Whereas an email, you send an email, you know, 30 minutes later or even 24 hours later, you get an email back. So it's not as instant. If it's instant, you could use chat with someone on, okay? Now, you could also say we talked on Facebook. This would also imply an instant back and forth. We talked on Skype, we talked on Messenger, we talked on IM. Either one is fine. And perhaps the least common, I called him. So notice, you call someone. You phone someone. You don't call to someone. Sometimes I hear that, but it's not correct. I called him, past tense, right? I called him, I phoned him. So we use phone as a verb, even though phone is a noun. Do you have a phone? Yes, of course I have a phone, but here we're using it as a verb, okay? Very common. Both of these are common though. I called him, I phoned him. And if he doesn't pick up, you can say, I left him a message. I left him a voicemail. So, so many different ways to communicate with people these days with modern technology. And there are different ways we form these sentences grammatically. So make sure you spend some time in the practice exercises getting comfortable with the most common ways that you communicate. I Skype with my French boyfriend in Paris until like 3 in the morning. Alright, so now you can feel really confident talking about the different methods of communication in both noun and verb form. But of course, you need to practice. So I want you to form three sentences using three different methods of communication and put them in both the noun form and the verb form, okay? Do that in the comments below. You need to practice these concepts in order to feel comfortable using them in the real world. So put your examples in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe. And before you go, make sure you head on over to my website, j4senglish.com, and download your free speaking guide. Now, in this guide, I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently.